The unmasking of a wrestler, especially one who built their reputation under a mask, is a significant event, laden with tradition and consequence. In Lucha Libre, the mask holds deep cultural significance, representing the wrestler's identity and honor. Putting one's mask on the line in a match is a risky gamble, a potential career-ending move that demonstrates the gravity of such a decision. Legendary luchador El Santo, an icon who epitomized the sanctity of the mask, remained masked throughout his long career, only revealing his face on television a week before his death. Even in moments of crisis, protecting a masked wrestler's identity is paramount. When former WWE performer Lince Dorado suffered a concussion and seizure during a match, the first responder ensured Dorado's face remained covered, underscoring the deep respect for this tradition. In stark contrast to the reverence for masks in Lucha Libre, American wrestling promotions like WCW and WWF in the late 90s and early 2000s often opted to unmask their masked wrestlers. The reasons for these reveals varied, ranging from intense rivalries and legal issues to simple character reintroductions or even the whims of executives like Eric Bischoff. Let's delve into the stories behind some of the most notable unmaskings in American wrestling and explore the diverse motivations that led to these reveals. Juventud Guerrera lost his mask to Chris Jericho, despite neither wrestler wanting to remove it. In the world of Lucha Libre, the mask is sacred. It's more than just a costume, it's a symbol of identity, honor, and a legacy often passed down through generations. So, when Juventud Guerrera, a second-generation luchador and son of the masked Fuerza Guerrera, stepped into the ring against Chris Jericho at WCW Super Brawl 1998, the stakes were incredibly high. Jericho, a master of the microphone, built the feud by mercilessly taunting Guerrera, claiming he was hiding a hideous face beneath the mask. The climax of their rivalry was a title versus mask match where Jericho, after a hard-fought battle, forced Guerrera to submit. He then added insult to injury by ripping the mask off his defeated opponent, a moment that became etched in WCW history. However, what many fans didn't know until recently was that neither wrestler wanted the unmasking to happen. In a surprising revelation on Talk is Jericho, Guerrera admitted that losing his mask was a shock. He emphasized the importance of the mask in Lucha Libre, saying, Every wrestler, you don't want to lose your mask, you always want to have it. Jericho confirmed that the decision was not his, stating he had no influence at that point in his career. He revealed that the unmasking was enforced by WCW executive Eric Bischoff, despite both wrestlers' objections. The loss of his mask did not negatively affect Juventud's career. He continued to wrestle around the world for many more years, including a run in WWE in the mid-2000s as the leader of the Mexicools faction. Guerrero returned to national TV in the United States when he wrestled Jericho again on a 2021 episode of AEW Dynamite. Guerrero told Sports Illustrated Now I have two different personas, QV with the mask and the juice without the mask. Kane loses his mask in a match to Triple H. Kane, the storyline half-brother of The Undertaker and a Hall of Famer in his own right, is one of the most iconic masked wrestlers in WWE history. However, in one of the most memorable moments of his career, he was forced to reveal his face because of Triple H. On June 23, 2003, during an episode of WWE Raw, Kane had the opportunity to challenge Triple H for the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. But with a major stipulation, his mask was on the line. Triple H, fresh off his Hell in a Cell victory, was determined to hold on to his title, while Kane, the Big Red Machine, sought to claim it. The match saw a fierce back and forth between the two, with Jerry Lawler on commentary repeatedly referring to Kane's hideous face beneath the mask. Despite a passionate crowd rallying behind Kane, the match ended in controversy, with interference from Evolution leading to Triple H's victory. As per the stipulation, Raw co-GM Eric Bischoff demanded that Kane remove his mask. The masked man was then attacked by Evolution, but his tag team partner Rob Van Dam made a timely save. However, in a dramatic moment, Kane reluctantly unmasked, revealing a less than glamorous look, a messy haircut and splotchy makeup, much to the surprise and sometimes mockery of fans. Sky Sports would go on to call this unmasking one of the most famous moments in WWE history, highlighting its significance in Madison Square Garden and its place as one of the most watched segments in Raw history. However, Kane later explained that the decision to unmask him wasn't as dramatic as it seemed on TV. In an interview with WWE.com, Kane said, 
I felt I had gone as far as I could with the mask at that point. At the time, the only people behind the decision to remove it were myself and Mr. McMahon. Sin Cara lost his mask to Sin Cara, yes that happened. The story of Sin Cara in WWE is a unique one, marked by mistaken identity and a battle for the right to bear the name. In 2011, WWE signed the renowned luchador Mystico, known for his high-flying style and captivating presence. He was given the name Sin Cara and debuted with much fanfare, complete with a dramatic entrance, special lighting, and high expectations. However, a wellness policy violation led to his suspension, leaving WWE with a conundrum. Rather than abandoning the Sin Cara character, WWE found another wrestler, Hunico, to take on the mantle. This led to a period of confusion and intrigue as the two Sin Caras began appearing on WWE programming. The original Sin Cara, now dubbed Sin Cara Azul, Blue, represented the heroic side, while the new Sin Cara, Sin Cara Negro, Black, portrayed a more aggressive, villainous persona. The conflict culminated in a mask versus mask match on SmackDown, where Sin Cara Azul emerged victorious, retaining the right to the name and mask. Sin Cara Negro was unmasked, reverting to his previous identity, Hunico. After the original Sin Cara's departure from WWE, Hunico would once again take on the Sin Cara role, achieving success as both a singles competitor and as part of the popular Lucha Dragons tag team. Psychosis lost his mask twice in his career. The first unmasking occurred in WCW in 1999. During a hair versus mask match against Billy Kidman on Monday Nitro, Psychosis, despite interference from Chavo Guerrero Jr. and Juventud Guerrera, fell to Kidman's shooting star press. Following Lucha Libre tradition, Psychosis removed his mask, revealing his face to the world. However, this wasn't the first time Psychosis had unmasked. Honoring the deep-rooted traditions of Lucha Libre, Psychosis had requested to lose his mask first in his native Tijuana, Mexico. WCW granted his request, and he lost a match to his trainer, Rey Mysterio Sr., uncle of WWE's Rey Mysterio, forfeiting his mask in front of a Mexican crowd. Psychosis later expressed his discontent with having to unmask twice, feeling it undermined the significance of the tradition and misled fans who had already witnessed his unmasking in Mexico. He felt it was a fraud for the people, especially since news of his first unmasking had spread online. Eddie Guerrero took off his mask and went on to become a major star. Eddie Guerrero, a wrestling legend known for his charisma and in-ring prowess, carved his own path in the industry, even if it meant defying tradition. While he achieved fame in American promotions like ECW, WCW, and WWE, Guerrero's roots lay in Mexico where he began his career wrestling in his family's promotion. During a stint in CMLL, one of Mexico's premier Lucha Libre organizations, Guerrero wrestled under a mask as Mascara Magica. However, he despised wearing the mask, finding it uncomfortable and restrictive. Upon switching to rival promotion AAA, Guerrero made a shocking decision. In his debut match, he had his tag team partners remove his mask in the middle of the ring, an unprecedented act in Lucha Libre. This bold move sent shockwaves through the wrestling world. In a promo following the unmasking Guerrero explained that while he respected the tradition of the mask, he wanted to compete as himself, a Guerrero, and carry on his family's legacy. This act of defiance, though controversial, showcased Guerrero's independent spirit and willingness to break boundaries. He went on to achieve incredible success, becoming one of the most beloved wrestlers of all time, proving that his talent and connection with the audience transcended any mask. Gail Kim lost her mask before WWE and TNA. Before she became a trailblazer and icon in women's wrestling, Gail Kim had a brief stint as a masked wrestler. In her early days on the independent circuit, Kim competed under the name La Felina, concealing her identity behind a mask. This masked persona was a stepping stone in Kim's journey to becoming a legend. She wrestled for the Apocalypse Wrestling Federation in her hometown of Toronto, Canada where she even engaged in a heated rivalry with another future star, Tracy Brooks. This rivalry culminated in a hair versus mask match, which Kim lost, ultimately unmasking La Felina. Kim later reflected on her time as a masked wrestler, stating that she didn't miss it and considered it a part of paying her dues. She never particularly liked the idea but it was a stepping stone in her career. Soon after, Kim signed with WWE and embarked on an extraordinary career. She made history by winning the WWE Women's Championship in her debut match and further solidified her legacy by becoming a seven-time TNA Knockouts Champion and a TNA Hall of Famer. Swerve Strickland wrestled under a mask years before he went to WWE and AEW. 
Before achieving fame in AEW, Swerve Strickland embarked on a unique journey in Lucha Underground, where he portrayed the masked mercenary, Killshot. This character, inspired by Strickland's real-life military background, became a fan favorite during the show's run. In Lucha Underground's final season, Killshot engaged in a heated rivalry with fellow luchador Son of Havoc, culminating in a dramatic mask versus mask match at Ultima Lucha, the show's season finale. This intense battle filled with high-flying maneuvers and brutal strikes, showcased the athleticism and storytelling prowess of both wrestlers. In the end, Son of Havoc emerged victorious but it was Killshot who made the most impactful statement. He removed his own mask, revealing his face to the world and symbolically shedding his past. In a poignant moment, he presented his mask to Son of Havoc, acknowledging his defeat and explaining how the mask had allowed him to hide from his past demons. Killshot's unmasking marked the end of an era for the character and a significant turning point in Strickland's career that ultimately led to him signing with WWE NXT and later joining AEW and becoming the world champion. TNA's Death Crew Council faction had to unmask much sooner than was planned. The Death Crew Council emerged in TNA wrestling shrouded in mystery. Three masked figures in suits promising to restore order to TNA launched a series of attacks on top stars like the Broken Hardys, Grotto and Robbie E, and even world champion Eddie Edwards. After a brutal assault on Edwards, the DCC unmasked, revealing their identities as Bram, Eddie Kingston, and a returning James Storm. Storm's inclusion added intrigue as he had been suspended by Billy Corgan just weeks prior, fueling a storyline of rebellion against authority. Despite a promising start, the DCC's run was cut short due to real-life circumstances. Billy Corgan's departure from TNA forced a change in creative direction, leaving the DCC without their intended antagonist. The group eventually disbanded after Storm was betrayed by his partners. Bram, reflecting on the DCC, expressed his enjoyment of the faction and his desire to see it continue. He appreciated the camaraderie and the opportunity to work alongside his close friends Storm and Kingston. Unfortunately, circumstances beyond their control led to the DCC's premature demise. The DCC's story is a reminder that even the most intriguing storylines can be derailed by unforeseen events. Despite its potential, the DCC remains a fascinating what-if scenario in TNA history. The Spider Lady was unmasked during WWE's first screw job. The legacy of the fabulous Moolah is complex and controversial. While her contributions to women's wrestling are undeniable, serious accusations of exploitation and mistreatment of female wrestlers have tarnished her reputation. One of the most controversial incidents in Moolah's career involved fellow WWE Hall of Famer Wendy Richter. Richter rose to fame during the Rock and Wrestling Connection era, with pop star Cindy Lauper in her corner. She even defeated Moolah for the WWF Women's Championship, becoming a popular star in her own right. However, when Richter sought a better contract, she faced resistance from WWF owner Vince McMahon. This led to a controversial match in 1985 where Richter defended her title against a mysterious masked wrestler known as Spider Lady. Richter had suspicions about the Spider Lady's true identity, which were confirmed after a questionable fast count by the referee. An enraged Richter attacked Moolah, tearing off her mask and exposing the controversial champion. Feeling betrayed and disrespected, Richter left the WWF immediately after the match, marking a bitter end to her run with the company. This incident, often referred to as the original screw job, remains a dark spot on Moolah's legacy and a controversial chapter in the history of women's wrestling. In 1998, WCW's Master of 1000 Holds, Dean Malenko, found himself in a career slump. After suffering a demoralizing submission loss to Chris Jericho, Commentator Gene Okerlund added insult to injury by labeling him a bona fide loser. A dejected Malenko disappeared from WCW television for months. Jericho, never one to miss an opportunity, seized on Malenko's absence, relentlessly mocking him in a series of now legendary promos. He even produced a list of 1,004 holds, claiming to surpass Malenko's supposed knowledge of about 60 holds. Weeks of taunting and even an attack on Malenko's brother Joe culminated at Slamboree, where Jericho was on commentary for a battle royal to determine his opponent for the Cruiserweight Championship. As the match dwindled down to Juventud Guerrera and a mysterious masked luchador named Ciclope, Guerrera unexpectedly conceded, leaving Ciclope to face Jericho. In a shocking reveal Ciclope unmasked, revealing himself to be Dean Malenko. 
The crowd erupted in cheers as the master of 1,000 holds made his triumphant return. Malenko went on to defeat Jericho, reclaiming the Cruiserweight Championship and proving that he was far from a bona fide loser. This storyline showcased Malenko's resilience and Jericho's masterful ability to generate heat. The unexpected return and unmasking added a layer of excitement and intrigue, culminating in a satisfying victory for the returning hero. Alberto Del Rio unmasked Kalisto. As the two competitors battled, a turnbuckle spot went wrong, and Del Rio accidentally grabbed Kalisto's mask, nearly pulling it off completely. In a rare display of sportsmanship within the scripted world of professional wrestling, Del Rio quickly helped Kalisto adjust his mask, ensuring his face remained concealed. This act, though breaking kayfabe, demonstrated a respect for the lucha libre tradition where the mask holds significant importance. It's generally accepted among wrestlers that preserving the mask's mystique is paramount, even if it means momentarily breaking character. The match continued, with Callisto's identity protected, highlighting the unwritten code amongst wrestlers to uphold the traditions and symbolism of lucha libre. Abyss revealed his face to the world when he unmasked in TNA. Abyss, a monstrous figure in TNA wrestling's history, was known for his intimidating presence and brutal power. Portrayed by Christopher Parks, Abyss wreaked havoc in the ring for 17 years, capturing championships and leaving a trail of destruction in his wake. After nearly a decade of dominating the competition as the masked Abyss, TNA introduced a new character, Joseph Park. Park, a seemingly mild-mannered lawyer, bore an uncanny resemblance to Abyss, even sharing his real-life middle and last name. This intriguing storyline twist eventually revealed that Joseph Park was not Abyss's brother, but rather a manifestation of his split personality. This reveal, while creative, divided fans. Some felt it added depth to the character while others believed it diminished the mystique that had made Abyss so compelling. Ultimately, the decision to unmask and explore Abyss's psyche stemmed from a desire to revitalize the character. Whether this creative direction was successful is subjective and open to interpretation. However, it undoubtedly added a unique chapter to the legacy of Abyss, one of TNA's most iconic figures. Rey Mysterio was forced to lose his mask in WCW. Rey Mysterio, arguably the most recognizable masked wrestler of all time, has defied countless odds throughout his career. However, even Mysterio couldn't overcome the decree of WCW executive Eric Bischoff, who forced him to unmask in 1999. Bischoff, in his 83 Weeks podcast, defended his decision, claiming that removing the mask would strengthen Mysterio's connection with the audience. This contradicted Mysterio's own belief expressed in interviews with Ariel Helwani and Kurt Angle that he was more marketable while masked. Mysterio even revealed that plans for him to lose his mask against Eddie Guerrero at Halloween Havoc two years prior were scrapped. Despite the forced unmasking, Mysterio remained philosophical about the situation. He acknowledged that it might have led to his giant killer push against larger opponents, like Kevin Nash. Furthermore, when Mysterio signed with WWE, Vince McMahon insisted he wear the mask again, recognizing its iconic status. That's all for now. Remember to subscribe and like this video. If you think we left someone off this list, let us know in the comments. And please, send in ideas for future videos. As always, check us out on all of our social media accounts under the username at WrestlingNewsCo, and check out WrestlingNews.co for the latest wrestling news.